Hey, are you a business owner, entrepreneur, or professional? If so, we want you to apply to be a featured guest on our show. My name is Adam Torres, and I host the Mission Matters series of podcasts. I've recorded over 3,000 episodes, and we are just getting started. How do you know if you'd be a good guest to be on the show? Well, only one way to find out, and that's to apply, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We want guests that have a story to tell, guests with a brand, a product, or a service that can benefit my audience of listeners. If this sounds like you, go to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. I'd love to talk to you and get to know more about your story. Again, head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres to keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Karthik Manamuzi on the line, and he's CEO over at Rent Moolah. Karthik, welcome to the show. Good morning to, to you and all your viewers on this uh, beautiful holiday week. Oh, man. Well, uh, Karthik, I am excited to get into today's topic. So we're going to talk about how Rent Moolah is really innovating and helping families, especially during these financially and emotionally difficult times. Um, so maybe just to get us started, uh, tell us a little bit more about the company. So tell us a little bit more about Rent Moolah for the, for the audience that haven't heard of it yet. Absolutely. Um, the company was founded in 2013 and initially simplified the process of paying rent and utility online instead mm -hmm. of uh, checkbooks and uh, other complex way people transfer money. Um, and I joined this business in November last year, and what we have done is reimagined this entire business. Um, so we have two major stakeholders. We have the landlords, and we have the renters that we care about. Uh, our major vertical happens to be large multifamilies uh, with different um, you know, number of units that we normally support. So from a landlord's perspective, it's fairly straightforward. Um, they care about cash flow. Um, most of the times, the rent collected really feeds their mortgage and expenses. So it's very important to have a good revenue lifecycle management platform, which we provide um, a classic fintech platform that allows uh, not just ease, but also a secure way of collecting uh, and also uh, you know, correlating the, uh, the, uh, uh, the rent collections. So we do that alongside um, very strong analytics uh, and uh, reporting for the landlords. They can stay on top of all of those things. And uh, on top of it, we also provide a strong risk management uh, platform capabilities, which includes providing tenant screening, tenant insurance, uh, so on and so forth. And last but not the least, we are um, planning to release some working capital options for the landlords. So fairly straightforward from a landlord's perspective, a comprehensive platform, uh, to manage your community of renters and uh, make sure that you're able to perform your duties. From a tenant's perspective, um, our vision here is to empower uh, tenants to take control of their finances, irrespective mm -hmm. of their socioeconomic background. Um, you know, there is a, it's a the, the renter population is pretty huge, Adam, as you know, uh, okay. in North America, 15 million family households. That's one in three households are renters. So they all come from, you know, multi-generational, different socioeconomic background. So as a, a fintech company, we are committed to really, um, you know, creating a level playing field. So financial literacy is on top of our mind. So everything we do is about simplification. So how can we empower uh, the tenants, uh, our consumers, to take control of their finances uh, through a simple, secure, and integrated system? Uh, and we do that by deploying a very diverse ecosystem of world-class global partners. Now, what does it mean for our renters? Uh, we think about their life cycle. So as a tenant, you can start by searching for the right apartment through our partners on the apartment listing site. Uh, once you find the right apartment, you can make an application to become a tenant through our platform. You can get in front of the line through our tenant screening services where we are able to do you know, credit criminal, criminal screenings uh, through our partnerships. And once you get in front of the line, um, we, we are able to help you process to the next stages. Either you have your own tenant insurance or rental insurance. If you don't have one, 
uh, in some cases is required or mandated by the landlord, uh, then we do provide an option to purchase rental insurance on our platform. Mm. Uh, and depending on which market we are supporting, uh, Canada, U.S., today we are operational in over 400 cities in North America. So if you happen to be in the U.S. and you're looking for alternatives to your security deposits, imagine the strain, Adam, on ordinary families. So you are really working hard, making sure that your rent is paid, your expenses are taken care of. Now, on top of it, when you move into an apartment, depending on the state uh, requirements, uh, you may have to put up one, two, or three months of your rent up front as security deposit. That creates mm-hmm. an enormous strain on your cash flow. So we're able to uh, to remove that strain through a major partnership uh, that we have built with a Fortune 300 company called Assurant, and we are able to provide a security deposit alternative. So you can purchase a bond instead of putting up uh, big cash deposits uh, as low as 10%. Uh, and the bond covers the requirements of the security deposit. Uh, and then we are also working, and this is something um, we expect to roll out early part of next year. Uh, during these tough times, landlords are worried about, you know, the, the steady cash flow from the rent. Uh, so we do have a lease liability product that we are currently working on that can protect the landlords up to four months of lease. It's a lease guarantee program we are working to release early part of next year. So stay tuned on that one. So once uh, the renter is done, you know, finding the apartment through the tenant screening, found their insurance, um, you know, leverage something like the security deposit alternative, puts more cash in their banks, um, and then they move to the next part, the most important part, payment. So we are able to provide 360-degree payment options because people have different level of comfort and competency when it comes to digital platforms. So it's very important for us to provide every possible avenue. Uh, for example, if they want to do a bank transfer, great. In Canada, pre-authorized debit or EFT, ACH, they can do that. If you want a credit card, debit card, definitely possible on the platform, be it Visa, MasterCard, whatever brand you use, or specialty cards like Amex. Uh, if you are a Chinese student or a traveler and you prefer union pay, we are able to do that on the platform. Uh, we are also adding new features, uh, including digital wallet. Um, as well as Apple Pay, WeChat Pay, and so on, to provide maximum convenience. Now, there may be um, tenants who are still not comfortable transacting on the digital platform, so we have an in-cash solution um, coupled with a digital wallet solution, two options here. In the in-cash solution, we can just simply send a QR code uh, in the form of a text message, and they can walk into retail locations like Walmart, CVS, 7-Eleven, uh, and they can they can take care of the payment over the counter, and the the payment reconciles on the platform as though it was a digital payment. So maximum flexibility there. They're able to take money orders in can, through Canada Post. We are working on a lost box solution, so people who still write checks can do. Now, if you ask me, why are we spreading ourselves to be able to support every kind of payment? The answer is quite simple, Adam. Because for the landlord, um, the full effectiveness of a digital platform comes into play if and only if a majority of their renters are paying using the platform or else they're stuck with Mm. manual operations and imagine you collect rent through the month so this is a never-ending cycle yeah so we are able to accommodate close to 100 percent of your renter payments and through a digital wallet platform you're able to do remote capture of checks and also 85,000 retail locations in the in the u.s where people can walk into gives maximum flexibility now, this is all about payments, Adam. Now, what if you are struggling um, sometimes to, to get the balance right, particularly through COVID um, and with the disrupted economic activity? Uh, what we are introducing in Q4 um, is a line of credit solution. So it's a revolving line of credit, uh, which is offered interest-free for a limited period of time. But the beauty of the solution is that it does not just use your credit score it uses uh, your financial history and data to formulate your credit worthiness. So people who, are, who might normally be discriminated against because of their credit score will have another shot at this. And the way it works is it's fairly simple. Uh, you're able to put your rent into a shopping cart, just like the Amazon. At the mm-hmm. time of checkout, you uh, click on the credit button, 30-second application, 60-second instantation, instantaneous decision, and you are provided a revolving line of credit and 15 seconds to check out. So you're combining the power of Amazon uh, for the very first time uh, in a 
uh, rental payment platform. And not only that, uh, the, we are combining convenience with an additional line of liquidity. And now if you don't qualify for the revolving line of credit, uh, we are considering providing you other options like micro loan options uh, at a prime rate less than 8% and so on. Um, and then once you're done with your payments, we allow the tenants to report their on-time payment to the credit bureau. So why wouldn't you take advantage of this? Because your rent payment happens to be one of the most on-time payments. And if it can help bolster your credit score, uh, it can allow you to maybe rent a bigger apartment, improve your quality of life, or guess what? You want to become a first-time homeowner, this mm -hmm. can allow you to borrow better as well. So we're able to provide these services. Now with 50 million uh, North Americans renting, uh, we should be thinking about using your rent and utility payments to help boost your credit score. And last but not the least, we provide a tenant communication platform. Um, you know, everything from bulletin board to, uh, you know, replacing those uh, because people are worried about contact uh, and uh, the new reality under COVID. Your house has become everything from shared space to your home, your office, your gym, mm -hmm. uh, everything. So this uh, digital bulletin board will help you uh, to create that community with your tenants, which is increasingly important. Um, you know, community is a must-have amenity in today's world. And we are also able to um, provide for, you know, marketing opportunities for the landlord. For example, they can promote local mom-and-pop businesses, um, you know, for a fee or without a fee as a service to the tenants. And that helps kind of bolster this, this compassionate approach towards helping each other and building a community. So that's what we offer at Man, that's awesome, and I love it because you're creating a lot of win-win scenarios or win-win-win, right? So, I mean, it's good for your company, obviously, Rent Moolah, but, I mean, the tenants, the landlords, um, the flow of economy just in general, and, and you've made it so easy for people. I mean, that's, it's just pretty, it's pretty amazing and, and the speed at which you're doing things. Um, so that being said, I mean, what are some of the, you know, you have a unique vantage point, like running Rent Moolah and with all this data. What are some of the things that are you're curious about right now and that maybe you're researching in your space? That's, that's a great question, Adam, and you're right. It's about community. It's about creating successes for all parties, correct? Um, and one of the things I looked at, and, and uh, I'm, I'm, you know, my background has been in, in uh, enterprise applications. I've worked in different fields. Uh, when I came into the real estate, looked closely at the market, one of the things that I struggled to understand is that in 2019, close to 48 million renters paid $550 billion in rent and utility in 2019, U.S. and Canada alone. Uh, however, there is a very limited financial infrastructure enabling this transaction. There's a lot of uh, platforms that talk about, you know, let's just transfer the money for a fee, but that's just splitting the pie. What about growing the pie? And if you look at e-commerce, right, which is a very cyclical market, um, a lot of the spend happens during, uh, you know, certain times of the year, almost 85% in the holiday season. Uh, even there, you see an explosion of products in e-commerce when it comes to checkout credit, buy now, pay later, installment pay, uh, and the renters are a much better risk class than category. However, they do not have any convenience when it comes to actually, uh, you know, leveraging additional liquidity to pay anything other than the conventional credit card options, which might seem good initially because you get a 3 to 5% cash back, but in 30 to 60 days, <laughs> the, the interest becomes due. So I was kind of very, very much obsessed with, you know, what happens because if you, even before COVID, 78% of Americans and 53% of Canadians were living paycheck to paycheck. And 40% of the household cannot take an unexpected $300 to $400 spend, unexpected spend. And many times they have to borrow prime or subprime based on credit score. And uh, in many cases, it exposes them to predatory lenders who can blur the line between principal and interest. Um, so what about these families, hardworking families? How can you create options for them? So there are a lot of things that I'm exploring, one of, one of which is how do we create a reliable financial infrastructure for one of the biggest spend items on your monthly budget, paying rent. You cannot shelter in place without a shelter, right? So um, this is one of the areas I've been very curious about, and, I, and I've been researching and working with partners uh, and, and that's how we came to that, the line of credit solution. Uh, mm -hmm. We're looking for viable alternatives to credit score-based lending. I'm looking at alternate lending where data can be used for good. So, you know, nothing wrong with credit score, but it has its 
its downside. For example, credit score is a snapshot that people look at for one-time decision making. However, if you are a new immigrant, or if you are a family or an individual who had a couple of bad incidents in your life, right? Like all of our second chances, um, this can impact your credit score. Also, it's feared that one in five credit scores uh, in the U.S. may have some kind of fault in it. Uh, and, and depending on your financial literacy level, you may not know the ideal way to build and maintain your credit score. So, yeah, and we know that people come from very different socioeconomic standards and uh, so it's very important to create a level playing field there. So I don't think there is a silver bullet to this to this problem. Mm-hmm. I think it's a community effort, uh, financial institutions, governments, counties, uh, individual consumers, fintechs like us. I think we need to take on this problem. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of uh, issues around data and privacy. So we obviously have to respect data and privacy. But if there is one thing data can be used to really help people, it is in determining their credit worthiness, right? And I can share a story from my personal background. I, I come from India, uh, from a lower middle class family. And my dad, when, when we were growing up, right, so to put me and my sisters to the college, he had to borrow. And he borrowed, it's unsecuritized borrowing, mostly from friend and family, right? Mm. So I think mm-hmm. that uh, the, the community aspect is very important. People's intent and ability to repay may be uh, better determined by combining credit score with something like their mm. financial data, their social networks, things of that nature. And I, I'm very much obsessed with that uh, and creating a, a fair a level playing field. And I, I think it, it takes a village to make it happen. It's not just one company, uh, but that is that is one thing I've been obsessed with. No, I love it. I mean, it, it's some, I, I, lo- I like that you're out there working for the families because that's what you're doing, and I, I like it because not everybody's working on solving these problems, and you are. And I think that's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a problem worth solving because you're right. Financial literacy, all these other things that maybe some people you know don't have working for them. It'd be nice to you know to be able to catch a break and to be able to still be able to transition and you know benefit from some of the other things that others, let's just say, might have the opportunity to do. So I think it's great. Um, so let's. See, I mean, you've been a lot, lot of press going on. I mean, you've been, you've been, you've been busy. So you're featured in Authority Magazine. I mean, your company won an award for being a top fintech disruptor in 2020. I mean, tell me a little bit more about all this press and what's going on. You guys are, you guys are killing it over there. <laughs> no, I, I think it's just testament to the hard work and uh, and the vision that our team is working towards. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, so one thing about me, Adam. Uh, you know, personally, I, I grew up in India. I was one of the first five green cards to move to Germany when they introduced that as part of my my, my professional journey. Uh, and I like to tell people that my entire career was built around crisis. <laughs> when mm. I got my first job at SP, moved to Germany, it was immediately after the dot-com bust in 2001. And mm-hmm. I happened to manage mid-market business in UK and Ireland right around the 2008 financial crisis. And uh, this was my first job as CEO. It took charge in November. And two months later, you know, we are embroiled in one of the worst health and uh, economic crises um, that the, the econ- world economy has seen. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's very easy to be tied up, be depressed, but I'm a very optimistic person, like so are many entrepreneurs and a lot of, mm-hmm. uh, you know, ordinary families who fight day to day to, you know, put uh, bread on the table. Uh, and one of the things that I've learned uh, through my successes and my journey is that if you want to build something, uh, you have to you have to solve a real problem. Uh, mm. You have to look at what is happening. And oftentimes, the the best solution may not come from insiders. It's not a attack on on people with a deep vertical expertise. It's merely an observation. I feel like uh, you know knowledge is very empowering, mm-hmm. but it can also limit you. Uh, it can be a burden for you because you get so used to some of the problems that you don't think about those problems. So one of the issues that I came across when I was looking at how do you put a financial infrastructure around the most predictable spend that 15 million families make, uh, one of the biggest thing was, oh, if people can't afford to pay rent, they must be lazy. I'm like, I'm Mm -hmm. saying, okay, the reality of the world is that people are working three jobs, four jobs, just to stand where they are. So maybe we have to alter some of those thinking uh, to say that, you know, in today's world, it takes a lot lot more, uh, you know, working multiple jobs and getting everything done, uh, you know, to uh, to really be able to 
um, pay up on bills and everything. So you are, uh, you, you should avoid the temptation to shame people um, mm-hmm. based on their fiscal situation. And, and that is one of the things that, that we're driven, and that's a mission that my team uh, firmly believes in. I think the recognition, we're very happy, but the journey is just starting for us. And, uh, and we're very happy that these things get recognized because obviously we don't intend on doing this alone. We have a mm-hmm. wonderful ecosystem of world-class partners who all believe in exactly what we do. Uh, and I'm all about expanding that, that family, you know, uh, because I always say there are no silver bullets. All you have is a bunch of lead bullets. you got to fire in sequence, and it's going to take a village for us to get out of the situation. And I firmly believe, and so does my team, that compassion is the need of the hour. We really have to get through this. This is a extraordinary situation through COVID. Uh, there is $34 billion in past due rent owed by the American family. That number was just $21 billion three months ago. This is an extraordinary wow. strain on people. And it's going to require, um, you know, businesses, communities, governments, you know, um, wealthy, uh, high net worth individuals. It's going to require a community to help us get out of this. And, and we are very happy that our, our vision is recognized because it's very easy to get swept away with everything that's going around you. Uh, and we take that that responsibility very seriously. Oh, man. That's awesome, Karthik, and and well said. And I, I love um, I, I love it. I love that you're out there working for people. I like that your vision. I like what you're doing with Rent Moolah. And um, to end it, I, if somebody's listening to this and they want to learn more about Rent Moolah or to connect with you and your team overall, I mean, what's the best way for them to do that? So absolutely. Um, you can directly reach me at CEO at rentmoolah.com. Or you could just visit us on our website, which is www.rentmula.com, and drop us a note there. Uh, we're always interested, um, you know, to, to talk to uh, customers, partners, um, investors, anybody who is interested uh, in our story. And uh, and they have a you know very really cool idea to combine, combine forces. We're all ears. You know, we we believe in cooperation. Uh, we believe the problem is big enough that, you know, and, and the market is big enough that we are happy to join forces with anybody who is like-minded uh, and, and has got the good of people at heart. Mm, amazing. Well, Karthik, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about your background and uh, and what you're doing with Rent Moolah. I mean, it's just an amazing company. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. If this is your first time listening, don't forget, hit that subscribe button. We definitely want you to come back and listen to some more episodes. We have some other great guests coming up. Um, and if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, obviously hit the subscribe button there. But more importantly, leave us some, some comments on the video. I'd love to know what kind of projects and things that you're working on and to keep our conversation going in the, in the YouTube community. And Karthik, thanks again for coming on the show. Thank you so much, and uh, I, I wish a, a happy and safe holiday season for everyone.